the serenity of performance art gets one thinking and touches your emotions in an introspective manner. And the Red Rebels similarly illustrates the somber, almost apocalyptic nature of climate change. that shoot in Wellesley, Massachusetts. It was a little overcast, which is nice for getting flat colors. We were working with two drone operators, two photographers. I was the DP, working mostly with the director, Jonathan Schwartz. I'm Jonathan Schwartz, and I'm an independent filmmaker covering the Red Rebels, a pantomime troupe in the tradition of Marcel Marceau and, and uh, uh, some of the great European mime troops who are actively protesting against and resisting climate change and sort of disturb you in, in, in a fashion as well. Yeah, we were looking for those disturbances in a sense, like juxtaposition of, of the traffic and the everyday and, and the Red Rebels, you know, walking through it. How do you kind of balance the planning for what you're going to shoot in a shot list with like talking more about the filmmaking now with improvising and reacting to the unknown? While I was deeper into the viewfinder, Jonathan was into the bigger picture. Where are the subjects moving next? What are possible interference or props or environmental things that we can interact with? Documentaries are about chaos, but you still plan as much as possible so that you can surf the chaos. But then when the action begins, it's very much like dance. You get your cues from the people that you're filming. You get your cues from the people that are watching. You get your cues from the environment. And then I need to communicate that to you in a way that's uh, quick and precise but doesn't turn uh, you, the camera person, into a client-oriented robot who's not inventing your own camera movement, body movements. You're so focused as the DP, as the camera person on exposure, focus, composition, the framing that to also be aware of the shot list what are you trying to achieve from the story side so that you can have the coverage the establishing shots the close-ups the details the faces just the feet isolating these moments in a live performance so that in the editing room you can tell a story about the red rebels about this protest that the whole thing was only two hours so we're shooting in 60 frames per second and slowing down those key moments for when the magic does happen another practical aspect is keeping you safe i i want you in the zone i don't want you tripping a, a rock or a log i want to get winning shots right we want we want good shots not uh not broken bones here considering the emotionality of those that we are filming and what they're experiencing. You know, there's the old eyes in the back of the head. Doing any kind of verite documentary work, you have to be looking through the viewfinder, but not only. You know, you're, you're also aware of what's going on. And I have the greater advantage if I'm not looking through a viewfinder. But both of us, uh, need to be aware of what's going on. And, you know, once we got the general coverage, we started going for more detail shots and more maybe experimental shots. What were the shots that, at the end of it, like, you're most excited about and why? Sometimes the juxtaposition between the Red Rebels and the architecture of the um, 19th century municipal building that we were in front of because that's part of what they do. You know, they photobomb 
iconic architecture. You know, we, we were filming at the end of the end of the day, which is always tricky, but you know, sometimes we have that, you know, this beautiful glowing light. But most of all, it was the two or three most experienced troop leaders were deeply engaged in their movement, their dance, their theater, the emotionality that radiated from them. And the way that they picked up on some of the details in the landscape, trees, the slope of the hill, and how to create drama by cresting the hill. They were thinking and inventing and improvising. And we were thinking and inventing and improvising. And, and, and the whole thing was very satisfying. Being into their performance, but not being so seduced by their performance that, you know, we, uh, we, don't have, we can't show critical aspects as well. We are not them. We are the other looking at them. So now perhaps the most important question in terms of, you know, your work overall and why we were even there that day, you know, why, why are you dedicated to telling these stories about environmental topics, climate change? Why are these stories important? And, and what about filmmaking and media is, is useful for telling these stories? I tell these stories because I have no choice. My interest in telling stories about climate change stem from uh, a blood debt that I have for the marvelous experiences and the kindness and the humor documenting and working with and living with indigenous peoples. That's what got me into uh, climate change. And as a good journalist, um, you know, I can always look forward to the future. I've been working on climate change issues for over 20 years. And I've got instincts. You know, I, when I drive a car, I know when the wheel's going to get flat, or, you know, when something's going to break. And uh, the climate is broken. There's no way to sugarcoat it. The climate is changing. By showing a behind-the-scenes look at documenting the Red Rebel Brigade, my hope is that we can look at performance art as one of the many tools of organizing, of protest, and of resistance alongside marches, music, direct action, in this desperate cry to save the planet and save our climate. The Red Rebels are part of Extinction Rebellion, which is a decentralized, international, and politically nonpartisan movement using nonviolent direct action and civil disobedience to persuade governments to act justly on the climate and ecological emergency. The Red Rebel Brigade is an international performance activist troop dedicated to illuminating the global environmental crisis and supporting groups and organizations fighting to save humanity and all species from mass extinction.